My name is Phoebe. I'm part of the STEM response team here at the University of Wolverhampton, and I'll be voicing this presentation for Professor Nazira Karodia, Pro Vice Chancellor for Regional Engagement at the University of Wolverhampton. I am a chemist who is specialised in chemistry that involves finding better ways of making new bonds between carbon atoms. You could say that my favourite chemical element is carbon. I wonder, what's your favourite chemical element? Let me tell you a little about my education. I attended Esther Payne Smith Secondary School in a city called Peter Moritzburg in South Africa. I attended this school for the last six years of my schooling before going to university. This was under apartheid and the school was designed for people descended from Asian workers bought during the British Empire. In terms of facilities, it was deficient and lacked the provisions reserved for schools for white students. However, it was in this school that my interest in maths, science and chemistry in particular began. My chemistry honours degree, which in South Africa meant four years of study, was at the University of Natal in Peterboritzburg, now the University of KwaZulu-Natal. I was very excited when I saw the facilities. I enjoyed the lab classes and doing research projects so much that I decided to study further. I was lucky to get a scholarship to study for my PhD degree at the University of St Andrews in Scotland. The three years went very quickly and I learned lots of new chemistry and many different types of techniques. I was most excited when I developed new chemical reactions and discovered new molecules. My research interests are in three areas, green chemistry, medicinal chemistry and science education. I'll give you some examples of the green chemistry research I've done and tell you a little about my science education research. A definition that is widely used is said by Paul Anastas. Green chemistry is the utilisation of a set of principles that reduces or eliminates the use or generation of hazardous substances in the design, manufacture and application of chemical products. Green chemistry processes are environmentally friendly and are safe, conserve raw materials and energy, and are more cost effective than conventional methods. There are 12 principles within green chemistry, which are 1. Waste prevention, 2. Atom economy, so making sure that all atoms in the starting material end up in the final product, 3. Less hazardous chemical synthesis, 4. Designing safer chemicals, 5. Using safer solvents and auxiliaries, 6. Design for energy efficiency, 7. The use of renewable feedstocks. 8. Reducing the derivatives. 9. Catalysis. 10. Design for degradation. 11. Real-time analysis for pollution prevention. And 12. Inherently safer chemistry for accident prevention. Almost all extraction processes in the pharmaceutical, cosmetic, food ingredients and fine chemical industries rely greatly on solvents the majority of which have petroleum origins. These extraction processes often contribute to environmental impact, require a lot of energy and are not very effective. These solvents can also be flammable. The ideal alternative solvent suitable for green extraction should have a high solvency, low toxicity and therefore a low environmental impact. They should also be easily biodegradable obtained from renewable resources such as non-petrochemical and at a reasonable price that should be easy to recycle. Some examples of safer solvents include ethanol, dimethyl carbonate and water. Molecular liquids are electrically neutral molecules. Ionic liquids are those made of ions. If you dissolve ionic crystals in solvent, you get an ionic solution or LHS. When you heat an ionic crystal, you form an ionic liquid, or an RHS. The chemical which we call salt, that you have on your table, is sodium chloride. This is made up of sodium ions and chlorine ions. A chemical that is made up of positive and negative ions is therefore called a salt. In sodium chloride, the ions are symmetrical in shape and are held together by strong attracting forces, which result in salts with a very high melting point, and this is not suitable for many applications. For example, common table salt has a melting point of 801 degrees Celsius, and this makes it therefore unsuitable as an ionic liquid. In comparison, the diagram on the RHS shows a salt which has an ion that has a structure which is good for forming ionic liquids. 
Ionic liquids have some different properties compared to solid ionic compounds. For example, they have low melting points. Chemists have chosen the general definition for low as being 100 degrees Celsius or below. This may look familiar because it's the boiling point for water, where it turns from liquid to a gas. Ionic liquids are also good solvents. They can dissolve many different types of substances. They also have a high thermal stability, which means they are more resistant to changes in their chemical or physical structure. They tend to have a high electrical conductivity, which allows electricity to flow through them. They have low or no vapour pressure, which offers much lower toxicity when compared to low boiling point solvents. They have low viscosity, meaning that they flow easily, and they are non-flammable. Because of their unique properties, ionic liquids have found wide applications. They are classed as designer solvents, a solvent that can be used for a specific chemical reaction. Apart from their use as industrial solvents, other examples include solar energy conversion, drug delivery, batteries and fuel cells, and energy storage. I have made many different types of ILs, and this is the first IL that I ever made. I have conducted several different types of chemical reactions using ionic liquids. One example is where widely available starting materials are converted into molecules which can be used as building blocks for other things, for example, medicines. In this example, I converted a molecule with six carbon atoms, in which a double bond between two carbons is a mixture of molecules with seven carbon atoms and a carbon and oxygen double bond. By changing the ionic liquid, I could selectively make more of type 1, linear, or type 2, branched. You can see why they are called designer solvents. The catalyst used for this is very expensive. I was able to reuse the solvent in catalysts a few times, and then recover and recycle them. This slide shows the chemical structures in a different way. ILs have replaced many traditionally used solvents in industry, thereby contributing to green chemical processes. Now I'd like to tell you about the research I've done on zeolites. When you heat water and you see the steam rise off as it comes to the boil, you certainly wouldn't expect the exact same thing to happen if you heated a rock, would you? That is, unless it's a special type of rock that's called a zeolite, which traps water inside of it. Zeolite literally means boiling stone. Zeolites are made from alumina and silica. They are very stable solids that resist the kind of environmental conditions that challenge many other materials. The most interesting thing about zeolites is their open, cage-like framework structure and the way it can trap other molecules inside it. If you have a cat, you most likely buy cat litter, which contains zeolites. They trap and control the unpleasant odours. I have used zeolites to build catalysts within them. The individual components to make the catalyst dissolved in a solvent with the solid zeolite particles in suspension. They enter the cavity where they react to form the catalyst, which is now being trapped in the cavity. Molecules can enter this cavity, undergo transformation, and then leave. Because of the space restrictions, you get selectivity in the chemical transformations. These are called shape-selective catalysts. The chemical you want can then be recovered by simple filtration techniques. Zeolites can be reused over and over again, I did many experiments where I converted molecules which can be used as valuable building blocks. Zeolites have many applications which include renewable energy and environmental improvements such as biomass conversion, fuel cells, thermal energy storage, carbon dioxide capture and conversion, air pollution remediation, water purification, the list goes on. Zeolites have provided solutions to many sustainability issues within our society. Finally. I would like to tell you a little bit about my research in science education. I engage my students in conversations about social and ethical issues within science and how to make the science curriculum more relevant to them. One of the areas that I find most interesting is co-creating learning and teaching resources which show the role of science in reimagining and reshaping the future. If you want to find out more about anything that's been discussed today, take a look at the following websites. And to learn more about the work of other women in chemistry, visit our website at makingthedifference.web.ox.ac.uk.